like your diner. Cool. I'm glad you got the reference. I feel like it's not totally obvious. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Hey, Paris. You there or are you just lurking? Going with lurking. <laughs> Have you started doing uh, Halloween stuff yet? Um, no. Well, so I started planning like a really last minute trip to Yellowstone because um, I've been wanting to go this whole summer and just like haven't planned anything. And now it's like, oh, like if I want to go, I have to go soon because everything's going to be closed for the season. Um, so I think we're planning something towards like the second half of October and I won't get back until like the day of Halloween. So yeah, but Halloween starts like now. Now. <laughs> like, That's true. I don't know. I don't know if you remember Jeremy talking about Halloween, but like as soon as he could buy a pumpkin, he was like That's like, true. putting up decorations. Yeah. Um, I admire. Yeah. Well, it's like I can decorate, but no one's going to come over. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's, it should be for myself. I just, I don't know. I just like uh, putting up the pumpkins outside. Yeah. And well, the thing is, like, the raccoons eat them. <laughs> I live, um, I live on like the back side of the apartment. It's, I mean, it's like a house, but it was like split up into three units, and so I live in the back. And like, like in order to like get to our door, you actually like go through um, kind of like a passageway underneath. Oh, the so no one sees your pumpkins. Yeah, I have like no oh. door to that. That's not fun. Yeah. Well, I was kind of productive today. I was kind of excited about that. Hear me share. I'll show off my productive stuff and maybe Paris will talk. I shall trick her. Hello. Oh, hey, Paris. See, I knew I'd trick you. I start sharing productive things and you'll, you would talk. Um, I started working on uh, the issue labeling. I know that's not what people want, evidently, but that's the content I'm here for. So that's still good content. Too bad. So it's all about good first issue and stuff and uh, the wanted and everything. So I should have a PR this week for that. I'm excited. But was someone at the TUC meeting? Do they know more? I was. Can you tell me about um, it? There was lots of talk again about the adding of a steering committee requirement to the um, graduation process. Uh, lots of folks who said that uh, it was too prescriptive. Um, the end goal was kind of a well, the only thing that should be prescriptive is the project giving instructions on how to get to maintainer or how to get to certain things. Um, and then maybe that could help with, you know, kind of like the need that folks feel like uh, prescribing things. Um, and then we also talked about like uh, community strategy overall and how projects should think about that. And can you talk about that a little bit more? Like, yeah. what, what do you mean by community strategy? Yep. So people were bringing up, um, people were bringing up how, um, like kind of like just these documents in general and like these thought processes uh, about like governance and uh, who's going to take care of your people and um, just kind of like everything that I had put in that one issue about creating a contributor strategy requirement kind of thing, um, whether that's like um, inside of their governance document or whatever. It's just a, a roadmap of, you know, how they're going to take care of their contributors pretty much. 
um, like, is it going to be through a SIG? Is it going to be through a working group? Is it going to be through full-time or part-time community managers that are paid by someone? Um, uh, things like that. And then the, the contributor ladder was just one thing that they felt like could be a good sign. And um, I think it was Justin, uh, Justin brought it up with the other piece where how can we, um, how can we give guidance about when maintainers leave an organization, if they still take their maintainership back or not back, but if they still uh, retain their maintainership, then that's a sign of a good project health. Uh, because that means that like it's not you know uh, according to their job or tied to their job uh, or something along those lines um, so that goes in kind of with like the you know the contributor ladder and and having those things spelled out instead of it just being this you know uh, it looks like it's tied to corporate employment kind of thing you know um, so that was, that was pretty much it, uh, for our side anyway. Okay. Did you get a feeling that, I mean, I know we're behind, um, do you get a feeling that, that we need to have certain documents by a specific amount of time or? I would say, anything? yeah, I would say we should get a shell for the, the contributor ladder and it doesn't need to be um i don't think it needs to be filled in i think it's like just like the shell to like the drafts folder yeah um okay and encourage also that would also encourage more people to come help us as well because right now we've just been kind of like spitting out the like it's coming it's coming you know what i mean me too because like I'm, I'm on one of those lines as well with the the community strategy piece um but yeah, no, I, we just keep kind of saying it's coming, it's coming. So. All right, help me getting, out. who's on the ladder? Getting some, I think it was Jennifer and Karen at one point. Um, okay. It was probably me at one point as well. Uh, so so I, that's why I'm like, there's, I'm not pointing any fingers whatsoever. I'm just uh, asking because I want to see if okay. anyone's had a chance to start something or if we are. Oh, what is delightful Casper? <laughs> yeah, that's my my kitty tabs. Oh my god, that's so cute. Yeah, every new tab is a little. Oh my god, what? Where do I get this? Oh, it's a tabby cat. What? That is so cute. Yeah, I've wait. never seen anything like that. Wait, sorry for railroading. <laughs> All right, if you go to tabbycats.club. <laughs> What? This, that is we put so this in our cute. official meeting notes because we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Tabbycats.club. It's in all the browsers. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Sorry I'll actually that. reference that later. Yeah. Um, so our contributor ladder template, I think we had some scope of what we wanted in and out. We had some examples of oh, a whole bunch of examples. That's wonderful. But we don't have a template yet. Um, so maybe we could look at the examples and then just kind of pick out that and use that for the show. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, I like that's the thing. I feel like a good, a good, uh, a good template for us at this level would just be some like, maybe some like pros of what we've seen in the examples and that's it, you know? Uh, and then later on we can do kind of our own custom, custom guidance, if you will. I mean, Karen, do you have, do you have time to maybe help make a... Help? I think so. I, I should be free for like the next few weeks, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm back. That'd be great. Um, I, if you want to send me things to help think about, um, that'd be awesome. If you want, we in the Slack, um, we could like you could just like throw out a link and be, we could like talk about it. Like we could even like, you know, say what we like about it and what we don't, uh, maybe not like maybe less of what we don't, but um, I don't know if you want to collaborate that way. That's, that's like super easy for me. Cause like in, in the middle of boring meetings, I can be like, 
<laughs> I can I can come into Slack and then talk to y'all. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, Karen, feel free to open a PR as soon as you want to. You don't have to work in the Google Docs. Um, yeah. Because we found that a couple of us have found that we, we've been able to move faster by just saying we're going to open a PR and iterate there. Um, Agreed. Yeah, and it's going to go in a drafts folder, so it's okay to merge and then have somebody else, if they want to make significant edits, open another PR and make more edits on top of your pull request, too. You don't have to be the person who synthesizes everyone's feedback and somehow makes a bunch of text, because that's asking a lot sometimes, I think. Um, I think that helps us move forward more quickly if we don't ask that of somebody. Um, and you said there's one other doc that the TOC wanted from us, perhaps? There were, there were three docs that were talked about. One was the contributor ladder. Um, the other two were um, some kind of a plan for sustainability or longevity. Um, Is that the community strategy? Yeah, that's, it's kind of, no, okay. no, not at all, actually. Oh, okay. Um, the, um, so, um, because this basically came around addressing, you know, why does the multi-organization requirement exist in the first place? Okay. And um, basically it came down to a few things. One was openness to contributions. Um, uh, the, um, yeah, and the second one was, you know, hey, if all the contributors to a project work for the same company and that company ceases to exist or they leave the CNCF, then you basically have a zombie project. Um, now, I'm not clear on what would go into such a document that would in any way actually ameliorate that. You follow me? Yeah. Um, that's why I wrap. That's why I wanted to wrap it in with the community management because I felt like by itself it didn't ride. But if you talk yeah. about, like, if you talk about if you need a SIG, a working group, or a full time part time, or a steering committee, or whatever that's focused on community growth, sustainability topics, et cetera. And you're kind of covered in those areas anyway, because you already have people thinking about that stuff, right? Instead of like doing a project, blowing up, and then realizing, oh shit, we forgot about that part. Um, where I said, that's why I'm like, I think that that guidance and like th having maintainers think about that early on, like where they want to grow their project, how they want to grow it. Like that's all, of, that's all a part of like their principles, their vision and their mission. And then, once they have that, that's how they can kind of think like, okay, well, we're probably going to have a lot of people contributing here. So we should probably think about people that are, you know, going to take, take care of this. So like, you know, what strategy should we employ? Um, that's kind of where I was like hoping to like wrap that in. And then, um, and then obviously with like the, and then we can tie like the contributor, contributor ladder stuff in with that. I don't know if I'm off base, let me know. I just, I just couldn't think of like what you're saying. I couldn't think of like a doc or anything that like a project could do that would address that without just like a checkbox, if that makes sense. Yeah. The, um, um, yeah, we'll see. It was talked about like somehow, you know, they could write a document and that would take care of it. Um, the um, the other thing was um, a process for community feedback on the project roadmap. Um, the, um, Cheryl already has a process for that with the end user meetings. Cause I go to those now and they are so awesome. Yeah, that, yeah, people talked about that, but when we say community feedback, it's in, not only end users, 
You know, that's the thing. I think that's where we're also very ambiguous, though. Like, when we talk about feedback, that's all we say is, like, because, like, I hear it all the time. Like, people come to me, like, oh, Apple, give me feedback. And I'm just like, what kind of feedback? And that's, like, the ambiguous part is, like, where do you want the feedback? How do you want the feedback? I think that's where, like, the education piece needs to come in with the end users and also the maintainers with giving explicit instructions on how they want to interact with people. Can I ask a right. question? For, for the, I've never seen Cheryl's stuff except at a really high level at the, at like KubeCon. Does it get fed back at the project level with detailed information back to the like Helm or Envoy? Yeah, that I'm still figuring out. Yeah, because like I've only been, I've only sat in on one so far. So oh, okay. the one that I sat in, I was just so blown away at like how many companies were represented there and the types of people there and um that they were being so open about like what they use and adopt and like it was just great and like um that's what was just like okay so we've got this great thing right here and then we've got this great thing over here <laughs> you know what i mean so that's why i was just like where's the, the the like my brain cells are just like where do we connect right mm-hmm. yeah so i think that's that that's that area of growth that i think needs to happen and like in our original proposal for this SIG, we included some of that, but then realized like we also just bit off like the whole entire world in the charter. <laughs> the, um, anyway, this this morning we were thinking, you know, that um, Gov Working Group would do the feedback thing, and um, and this working group would do contributor ladder and we would figure out the longevity thing when we actually have some idea from the TOC what it is. I really, when they say, when they say longevity, I really think they are just thinking of uh, a forward progressive, like uh, documentation on how things work. Um, I think that's kind of what they're like, what they're lacking and like every project is different. And I don't know, it's where I'm like, how can we help with that? Um, Do we have examples of things that have already happened that have prompted this concern? Yes. Can you name them or are they like secret? Um, I mean, it's not definitely not secret. I mean, there's GRPC, there's um, uh, NATS, there's uh, several others who um, have been obviously in the CNCF for a long time and want to graduate. And the, since there's an ever changing TOC, they always, they not always, but they, you know, they try to change processes for the better. Um, but inside of that better process, you also have projects that hear like, oh, well, now I have to go in this one direction. Now I have to go in this other direction. And so it's kind of like, well, how can we prescribe them to do it the way that the TOC wants it in an ever-changing environment when, um, when it's kind of okay to also improve and change your processes, but at the same time, how can you like steer steer a project that that kind of like reactively um when you're talking about some of this stuff so are we still talking about the longevity plan yeah 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 and like so they're saying like so from 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 a nat's perspective from like from justin's example with the longevity and like maintainers leaving and like what happens if they all leave the one company or what happens if the company like folds like that's the that's the like, how do we, like, how does that, I don't know, how do they account for that ever changing thing, which gives mixed messages to projects, which ultimately like, that's why we've got like, you know, one project that, um, one project that's, you know, uh, graduate or incubating that has like all one ISV and then yeah. somebody in the sandbox that has all one ISV and the current TOC says that they don't like that, but you know, there's one in incubation that already does it like that. So it's just kind of like the conflicting, the conflicting things that we see with like 
certain projects and their maturity. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's where a lot of this stems from in some in some element. Right. And like, so for instance, like with Nats and GRPC, for instance, like they didn't necessarily have like a contributor ladder or any way that like tells their contributors how to like be a maintainer. So like a lot of the TOC would say, well, it seems like, for instance, on the GRPC side that like, you know, that Google controls it. So um, by at least having the documentation, because people say like, oh, well, I didn't know you could be a maintainer to GRPC. I thought you had to work at Google. Um, that's just a one example of a million, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's just more about like the documentation and the, the thought processes so that I guess the TOC has just more guidance and guidelines and can make a decision instead of being like kind of opinionated, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Cause like as a person, we speak as a person. <laughs> Some of the longevity stuff feels like saying, how do I say this? Like, it all comes down to people who are seriously overworked. And I'm leaving a company and I have to make a decision. Not me personally, I'm not leaving. But like, you're leaving a company and you may actually end up leaving that project because you're not being paid to work on that project anymore. But you know that that product may collapse if you leave because you may be the last maintainer or the last most invested uh, leader on the project, right? And like, it kills me that it always comes down to individuals at the end of the day, even when you're in the CNCF. You know what I mean? Even well, and this isn't necessary. They're, they're, they're saying like companies who all use it, and like the CNCF is also swimming in money, and yet really like all these longevity plans let's be honest comes down to whether or not people are willing to individuals are willing to to just make it their priority and do these things well i yeah. think they're just concerned that like in like in a like in the case where you want to leave for instance like you want to leave the, you know the like the apple stand down the street and mm -hmm. um they just want to make sure that when you do, you have the right to take your maintainership with you uh, instead of the like, you know, marshals down the street saying, oh, no, so now you don't work at marshals anymore. You can't be a maintainer and we're going to PR you out of the file. Yikes. And that happened. There's, okay. Yeah. So, um, there's also one of I didn't the, realize that was even. Yeah an option in the CNCF, so that's a little scary. I'm okay. Well, it's not an option. It's like you can you can PR anybody out of a file right now, like if reporter. Like there's there's no like unless you have guidelines for your project for reporter, you can do what you want to do. Right? Like I guess we've already moved through this because Jeremy left and we had to make that right. decision, even though it was a Microsoft project and it's already Wait, we're recorded. Yeah, we already dealt with this. Yeah, no, but the thing is, and you have to be able to remove people who have actually left the project. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and I'll say for that matter, there are projects that I won't name on a recording that have set up a situation where they don't allow anybody who doesn't work for them to become a maintainer. And therefore yeah. they've yeah. set up a situation where they're already risky, if you follow me. Yeah. Okay, um, that makes more sense. I, w I thought it was more of a like, what happens when everyone legitimately moves on and then someone's yeah. stuck holding? <laughs> it's, about, it's about all of, honestly, I think it's about all thing. of those situations. Exactly. It's kind of like, how do you protect and how do you protect the individual and how do you protect the project? It's like, yeah, I think it's all of those examples. Like, that's, right. and that's what they mean. Like, that's why they're kind of, it's kind of ambiguous right now, but I think that's, they just mean all of that, like, because there are just too many examples that are all like situationally different, but also the same. Anyway, that's going to be the hard one because it's not an area where we have a whole lot of prior art, at least that I know of. It's just so much work. It's just work. That's all. It's just a lot of thought. 
Yeah. Uh, well, it's just for some things like contributor ladders, we have a fair amount of prior art. Yeah. Um, ways for the broader community to give feedback. We have a lot of examples for that. Please feel free to add more. Uh, mm -hmm. I may not be capturing everything that was said there. I was just trying to lay out some of the more of the cases we're talking about here. Because when I heard longevity, none of these came to mind. So yep. it was really helpful for me. Anyway, um, I would not, I would love it if, if one of the results of this was that the CNCF requires some kind of contributor ladder for graduated projects. The, um, because I would say there are graduated projects where it is certainly possible to, to become a contributor to that project, but the process is not in any way clear. My question is why how do we decide when something should be a requirement for a graduated project mm -hmm. and when it should be a, a requirement maybe a little sooner? Yeah. Like we have a contributing guide. We require that very early on, right? We require that sandbox. I, I would expect or hope that a, con a con contributing ladder, contribution ladder would be something that should be articulated much sooner. Because you can be in CNCF sandbox incubating for a pretty long time. It seems there's not a lot of graduated projects. Um, and, and to be able to skate by without articulating who can be a maintainer, how to get there. Is it uh, an exclusive club um, before you're forced to say something and open it up? Maybe when it's too late, but after key decisions have been made and influence is already like you, you're past the point of influencing things that are important. I, I'd hate to see that be <laughs> put at the very end. I, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna say the same. I, I was going to say agreed. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I kind of got on my soapbox and it. Yeah, to... yeah. You know, you you forgot you forgot the choir is with you today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So how are we doing? Do we, we've got, we've, we've thought a bunch of like deep thoughts. Do we have enough information that um, if we try to go off and, and write the ladder shall work on the community strategy? I don't think anyone's raised a hand for sustainability, longevity, but Paris was suggesting maybe that just baked in to every layer of the community strategy. Do we have enough information that we think we can act on all the stuff we've talked about here? I think so, um, especially for like draft states. Okay. I, like I, now that now that we've like talked through the, just submit the damn draft. Um, <laughs> I feel a little bit better, you know. I do. I feel a little bit better about that. So yeah, I feel like we should just start submitting the damn drafts, and you know, it's obviously explaining that in our PR that it's a draft or whatever. So. Uh, yeah, I think we have enough for that state for sure. Now it's just finding the time and making a priority pretty much, which I will for sure. Okay. Karen, do you, you in, in on this? Do you feel like you got enough information for your at the ladder? Yeah, can you send the links to this, um, like to the meeting agenda and then also to the contributor, or like, I know you have the link to the contributor ladder notes in this, but I don't have access to this doc right now. Yeah. Do you think Jennifer um, can still help with the contributor? Sorry, I'm making the clock just so much. Uh, I don't know. Reach out to her. I can definitely help with it. So, um, as long as people don't mind, I will happily put my soapbox on the ladder too. <laughs> I've got to jump for a virtual doctor appointment anyway. 
Um, yeah, no, let's let's get some drafts in, team. Team draft. <laughs> totally. Well, I'm because mean, if we're if we're good now, then I'll just go right back to working on the issues, and maybe I can finish it up and submit a PR. So. Yeah, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Oh my gosh, there are all these chats and I missed all of them. I like <laughs> need to get better at Zoom. No, it's just really hot. Trust me when I tell you, like, I, I think you can't do, I'm going to be late to my doctor, but I don't care, I said doctor. Um, you can't, it's so impossible to lead and try to take notes and also pay attention to the chat. Like, I feel like you just can't do all three at the same time. It's kind of like juggling. For me, anyway, I just feel like I, I, that means I can lead and pay attention to the chat and kind of facilitate, or I can lead and take notes, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for like, res like absolving me of the same. No, no. It's just it, it's the vir the virtual life that we have now. It's just like, damn it! I need to be an octopus. <laughs> Seriously, I'd be down with that. Just a couple two extra. I won't get greedy. <laughs> But now that you've looked at the chat, could somebody actually sh share the link to the notes? Oh, I thought Karen did. Or is that? No, she said it's the wrong one. Oh, okay. It was in the SIG contributor strategy uh, Slack too. I just oh, shared okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, somebody, should about ping, somebody should ping Amy about fixing the calendar item. I think it's in two, if I go to. I'm just waiting for a cloud native calendars, honestly. Is this when, link when to our working group? Graduated. Yeah, so here's our notes too. So if you're ever lost at the top of the SIG contributor strategy meeting minutes, it links to the notes right here as well. Oh, okay. Okay, just sorry. Like there's so many really long mm -hmm. Google Doc links. So sorry about that. I tried to link to it in Slack at the beginning to get us to rolling fail. Bye y'all. I appreciate you. Bye. Bye.